Hi, my name is Pop. I'm making a video that shows how you can make your own checkbook and checkbook register and deposit slips with a spreadsheet. I am using Ubuntu Linux and I am using LibreOffice Calc, but this would also work in Excel. Most people use Quicken or Microsoft Money and I have in the past also done so. However, if you don't want to spend the money, you can use a spreadsheet for this, and it's very easy to do. You just make a simple spreadsheet. Each line represents a check or a deposit. I got my column headers, who, and if it's a check or a deposit, the category, that would be your chart of accounts, utilities, electricity, wages, daily deposit, whatever you have, gasoline, and so on. The date, and you want to number your checks. And then I put in four notes. One of them prints, and then the other three are just to myself. And then to keep everything straight, unless it gets jumbled up, I just numbered every, uh, every row. Now, the checks, the first one here to MasterCard, go in as a negative figure. And the deposits, they go in as a positive figure. And there are different kinds of deposits. Usually in a business, you'll make a physical deposit slip for cash and checks. However, the ones for MasterCard, Visa, Discover, American Express, and so forth, they go in electronically. Quite often they go in either as net with the uh, amount taken off daily or if you have it set up they'll put them in as gross and then at the end of the month take off the amounts that they charge you. But usually the MasterCard Visa Discover go in one deposit and then American Express for some reason goes in as another deposit. And then if you do have a bank fee that would go in as a negative. You would get that off of your monthly statement. Now at the bottom of the spreadsheet here I've got the different sheets. The R is the one we're on. This is the register. C is the checkbook. And you can buy pre-printed checks that are used for Quicken. You can also buy pre-printed deposit slips so that you don't have to make them out with a ballpoint. And then I've got a special one over here for payroll. Now the way you make the checks is very easy. Let's say for instance I'm going to write a check to my accountant. I highlight that row and then hit Control C. That copies it. Then I go over to the check that I'm going to print and I hit the C. And then I'm here and I hit Control V. And it gets copied. Now this row is not printed. I've got everything on this row reference down here where it is formatted to print like a check. A1 is here. That's who the check is being written to. The date, that's D1. The amount, that's in B1. And since the checks are written as negatives, I went ahead and multiplied it by minus 1. The two minuses cancel out and bring it back to a positive. Right here is a function that is the key to the whole thing. It's a money text function. It converts numerals to text. And it even goes so far as to say that these are US dollars. I've got a note right here that's in F1. That's the invoice that I am referencing on my check to the person I am paying. And then I want to make darn sure when I put my pre-printed check in the printer that it is check number 
26. If it's not, I want to go back here and write in the correct check number. Now, most checks come three up on a page. The top one is the check. You tear it off and then there are two receipts called vouchers. You don't even have to print them, but it's nice to give the person you are writing a check to an additional copy as an additional record. Very often you do this for payroll checks. You certainly want to keep a physical copy, so at the very least you'd be tearing off the top one-third of the pre-printed check, that's the colored check, and then the two vouchers on the bottom, the two-thirds that are left, separated by a dotted line that, that's easy to tear. You could keep uh, two receipts if you wanted to and staple the invoice to the back of it, and that's your records. I have got the check here, but as we go down, you can see I did it again for the first voucher and still yet again for the third voucher. You can see it more easily when I go to page preview. And now this is just plain white paper. And when you print it on the pre-printed checks that you order from the office supply store, up in the top left corner is going to be your name and address and up here is going to be the pre-printed check number. It'll be check number 1000 whatever. And then along the bottom of the check is going to be your bank, your bank routing number, your account number, and then perhaps again your check number. And then there's going to be that dotted line where you tear it off. And then you've got the two vouchers and these are left white. Now you don't have to have the vouchers looking exactly like the check. You can print all that other information on there also. Uh, you could print the notes that you do not want the customer, uh, I mean that you're, that you're sending the check to. You don't want perhaps somebody to see those things so you can put down these other notes. I've got note one, that prints, but here I've got January bill for new phone and long distance, and then an additional note, and then an additional note, and so on. Uh, when you do a deposit, most people will just use the bank deposit slips with a ballpoint, and there is uh, a carbon copy and you, the bank keeps one, you get the other. You can purchase pre-printed deposit slips and they would look just exactly like uh, checks. And there's going to be a difference. You're going to add up all of your cash for the day. And here I've got $15. And then you're going to list your checks individually with the amount and the check number. That's the guy who wrote you a check and you took it in and redeposited it to your bank. It has a check number on it and then you're going to put his name on there. You need to know this in case the check bounces. And these pre-printed deposit slips, you can, you can also do this and it's very convenient because you don't have to fuss with it anymore and you've got a very very accurate record. There are a couple of other ins and outs of this. I have devoted one line only with your chart of accounts to each check. For example, um, dot, 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 dot. on Verizon here I'm listing that as the category phone and let's say for instance you're writing a check to MasterCard and there are two uh, let's say there are ten items on it well I didn't put a category here now MasterCard all they want is a check for that amount 
but you later may want to break it down and so you would insert a couple of rows if it's two items and you're gonna put down MasterCard, MasterCard, the amount of item one, the amount of item two, and let's say that one is for, oh, let's say it's category uh, stock for your store, and this one's going to be automobile, and then the date, and then the date, and then that same check number, that same check number, and then delete this line. You can add all of these up very, very easily, and that gives you your bank balance. Your bank balance, you need to know at all times exactly what's in your account. There's one other kind of check, and that is to a person for payroll. Let me just copy one here. This is fictitious. I'm going to go back to the check and I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to control V paste and there's this guy's paycheck that's the net that's how much he takes home however he may need to he may well he definitely wants to see his gross how much went to the government and so on so I made another one here for payroll and I'm just going to put it in here. Well, I've got another uh, tutorial on how to do payroll. And uh, here is a, a payroll tutorial. Let's say we're going to grab this here. This is uh, who. And I'm going to grab this guy. And I'm going to go uh, Control C, copy. So I'm, I'm getting row 8 and row 18 copied. And now I'm going to go back to my checkbook thing. And I'm going to go edit, paste special, transpose, hit OK. And this gives in great detail everything that this guy did that week for his paycheck. Uh, let me go to page preview. You hand him this plus his paycheck and that shows hours, rate, regular hours, regular dollar hours, overtime, rate, hours overtime, total number of dollars overtime, his total wages, gross, AFLAC, adjusted gross, married and single withholding uh, the 7.65 that comes off two times you contribute one what you sent into the government uh, EFTPS uh, that's what uh, electronic funds transfer payroll service then his net paycheck it just goes on and on I mean there's more complexity with this damn paycheck than there is doing the work well that's the government for you and in case you want to try using this, be careful. The alternative, of course, the alternative, of course, is to buy Quicken. And if you do buy Quicken, my gracious, uh, it has a learning curve. And if you already do know how to use a spreadsheet, you can try this out for a while and then transition over. In fact, you can make a comma delimited file of all of your events here and send it over to Quicken or to Microsoft Money in case you get tired of doing this. I have been looking at this and I don't think it is going to take you any more time. There is one advantage to using Quicken and Microsoft Money. There is a great tendency today to download everything that is in your bank. You can go online and see your daily deposits from yesterday and just download it right into your Quicken. Uh, that is not really checking things, that's just doing it the easy way, downloading it. You're, you have to be careful there also. 
Well, my name is Pop, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a whole bunch of YouTube tutorials, and I thank you very much.